This is a homemade video. Surgical technique for posterior polar cataracts. The main producer of this film, Dr. Maria Melo, have received travel expense reimbursement from ProCaps. The co-producer of this film, Dr. Luis Escaf, is consultant, receives royalties, and have received travel expense reimbursement from Alcom. We want to acknowledge that this technique is of the co-producer Dr. Luis Escaf. Posterior polar cataract is characterized by a plate attached to the posterior capsule producing an area of weakness. There are many articles in the literature describing posterior capsular rupture between 7 and 35% during phaco emulsification. This rupture can occur at any time of the procedure, but mainly during the hydrodissection that is the phase of the phaco in which the interocular pressure raises the most, as demonstrated by Dr. Fine and Dr. Basavada in their studies. Using the ultra chopper, we have developed the anti blockage technique to avoid the capsular blockage and the posterior capsular rupture during the hydrodissection. After making the capsular rexis, we make a deep central groove in order to communicate the posterior capsule with the capsular rexis opening. We can see now how the fluid flows in between the two halves reducing in this way the capsular blockage and the possibility of posterior capsular rupture. Using this anti-blockage technique, we can perform soft posterior polar cataracts using the following strategy. After doing the capsular rexis, we do not proceed to hydrodissection. We continue with a deep central groove performed with the ultra chopper. Then, we insert a cannula in the middle of the groove to make hydrodelamination of the nucleus. This nucleus is aspirated or emulsified, leaving only the plate adhered to the posterior capsule. It's very important to lower the parameters. The height of the bottle should be between 80 and 90 centimeters to increase even more protective measures. Now, we can proceed to make a viscodissection with dispersive viscoelastic to take off the plate of the posterior capsule in a more gentle and protective way. When we remove the plate, we can see the imprint and the posterior capsule remains intact. In the cases of hard posterior polar cataracts, after making the capsular rexis, we proceed to fracture the nucleus in two halves with the ultra chopper, preserving the posterior plate. Then we proceed with hydrodissection and we can see how the fluid surrounds the posterior plate without lifting it. Now we continue with the fragmentation in four pieces and we phaco the distal portions of the quadrants in order to reduce the thickness of the cataract. We move on to viscodissection to detach gently the plate. In this case of lift surgery, we can see how the tripod glue flows through the roof. In this hard posterior polar cataract or plus, we perform the capsular rexis. Then we make a deep groove with the ultra chop. We divide the cataract into two halves preserving the posterior plate. We now proceed to make the hydrodissection, spinning and division of the nucleus into six fragments with the ultra chopper. We emulsify the quadrants, reducing the thickness of the cataract. We did a small pit in the center to facilitate the fracture. Now we introduce dispersive viscoelastic to gently detach the posterior plate. The procedure is completed using the Akahoshi phaco emulsification tip. 
we can see the imprint and the posterior capsule remains intact. We believe this approach of the posterior polar cataract is a logical strategy, effective, safe, easy, and is a reproducible method for handling these cases.